My brothers and sisters, the Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. On the evening of that first day of the week, when the doors were locked where the disciples were for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood in their midst and said to them, Peace be with you. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. The disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. Whose sins you forgive are forgiven them, and whose sins you retain are retained. The Gospel of the Lord. Amen. 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 But we don't mean that in the sense that it's subdued or, or sad in any way. It just means it's a great feast. And in fact, if we were to be celebrating this properly, we'd be jumping up and down for joy and dancing in the aisles because of the gift that we've been given. The gift of the Holy Spirit, which was given at our baptism and again at our confirmation. Just think, with that gift, the God of the universe lives within us, lives in our hearts. What an amazing thought that is. Along with that Holy Spirit come some gifts and fruits that I think we're pretty much familiar with, but I'm going to talk about two in particular later. One part of the gospel today that really hit home with me is that last sentence. When Jesus says to the disciples, whose sins you forgive are forgiven them, and whose sins you retain are retained. Back in the early 90s, I had to go to Philadelphia for training. Now, I don't know if any of you were in downtown Philadelphia in the early 90s, but it was not a good place to be. The training facility was about four blocks from where my hotel was. And the concierge at the hotel said, it's probably easiest if you just leave your car in the parking garage and walk the four blocks. It's not that far. He forgot to tell me something. That walking those four blocks, I'd have to be stepping over the homeless people who were sleeping in the street. And that's exactly what I did. Much to my chagrin and my, my shame even today. I wasn't listening to the Holy Spirit. Because one of the gifts of the Holy Spirit is right judgment. And had I been listening, I could have heard him say to me, you can make a difference in one person's life today. Maybe you get them a sandwich. Maybe you just smile and say good morning. Maybe you take them to a shelter, whatever. I could have helped someone each of those days, but I didn't. I stepped over the pool. I'm ashamed of that to this day. Had I been listening, I would have heard. But to go back to the other part that I mentioned, the, the retain, retention of sins and forgiveness of sins. Years ago, I worked for a man that I just could not get along with. We had very different views on how the department should run, how customers should be treated, how its employees should be treated. So every day was one of these butting of heads, which was not a comfortable situation. Fortunately, it only lasted about a year and a half or two years, and I was able to find another position within the same company. But I carried with me that anger and that hurt 
and that sense that he had sinned against me. And I felt that part of the gospel speaking to me. Whose sins you retain are retained. Now, of course, that applies to the priesthood. I have no ability to forgive the sins in the sacramental sense. But I certainly could have forgiven this man for the way I felt I was treated. But I didn't. I carried that with me for a long time. But after literally years of prayer and hard work, I realized that was in the past. That had no relevance to my life today. And so by working with the Holy Spirit, I was able to forgive him. Now let's not confuse two words, forgive and forget. Okay? I have never forgotten what happened in that situation. But that's been a good life lesson because I now know better how to deal with difficult people. Had I forgotten those experiences, I would have learned nothing. And so met, the lesson would have had been repeated. That's the beauty of the Holy Spirit. He is eternally patient. It will give us opportunity after, after opportunity to learn the lessons we need to learn. But I'll tell you what, the painful lessons I'd rather learn on the first try. And they have to go through them again. I realized that I don't have the ability to retain sin. The only one that was being hurt by that was me. He didn't even realize that I was still angry all this time afterward because I hadn't, first of all, I hadn't seen him. And secondly, I don't think he realized through the process that he had hurt me. But what's really interesting about that whole thing is years later, my wife and I, who's a breast cancer survivor, 15 years now, we're at the Relay for Life here in Watkins Glen. And we're signing in, and who should come up with this guy? And we shook hands, we embraced, we shared dinner together, we caught up on what's going on in each other's lives. He told me he moved to Florida, just all kinds of things that happened. And what I realized is, by my act of forgiving him, I released the bonds on myself. And I no longer had an enemy or a person that I didn't like. I now had a new friend. It's amazing how well the Holy Spirit can work if we just allow Him. See, what I was missing there was courage, another gift of the Holy Spirit. Because it's really hard sometimes to forgive someone. Harder still to ask forgiveness. And I'm sure in that instance, that would have been appropriate as well because I'm sure I was at least half of the problem. But again, listening to the Holy Spirit leads us into places we might never expect to be. What I'd ask is over these next days and weeks, as we go through our lives, spend some time with the Holy Spirit. I know that's difficult, it is for me, because we have images in our head of God, the Father. And we know Jesus was human like us, so we can relate to those. But what do we have for symbols of the Holy Spirit? Tongues of flame and a bird. Really hard to relate to those on a personal basis. But I encourage you to take the time. Make the effort, because what you'll find is day by day, you start developing a personal relationship with the third person of the Blessed Trinity. When that happens, you begin to understand more and more the gifts and the fruits available to us if we just ask. Jesus told us, whatever you ask in my name, I will do for you. So let's ask that we be given the fullness of the Holy Spirit and the knowledge of what comes with that. Because when we do that, I think we'll find that we have the courage to do things we never thought possible. We'll have the ability to go out and really, truly make a difference. We have to remember, we are temples of the Holy Spirit. That Spirit is always within us, always available to us. All we need to do is ask.
angel and him who takes away the sins of the world. And blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Join us in our communion hymn, number 921, the living bread of God, number 921. Amen. 